Welcome to episode 76 of Norse Myths, Legends, and Folk Tales. My name is Mylinda Butterworth, and today we learn how Hildebrand and Dietrich venture out for an adventure and run into the giants Grimm and Hilda in part one of Dietrich of Bern. Dietrich was the son of Great Dietmar, King of Bern, whose brother was the fierce King Emmerich. He was but seven years old when there came to his father's court the battle hero Hildebrand, far famed for valorous deeds. And to that great warrior was given the care of the young prince, so that he might gain manly wisdom and skill in feats of arms. Fast friends they became ere long, and faithful were they one to another in after years, until death did thrust them apart. It chanced that when the lad grew strong and had desire for daring adventure, a giant and giantess, whose names were Grim and Hilda, ravaged the land with fire, and did slaughter many goodly subjects. Dietma raised a mighty army and went out against them. He could discover not the hiding place of the monsters who ever came forth unawares to work their evil designs. Now Dietrich had great desire to combat with the giant and giantess, for he was brave as he was strong and he sought most of all to win a warrior's renown. With Hildebrand, he hunted one fair morning in a deep forest. They came to a green and open space, when suddenly a dwarf started up and ran to escape them. The lad gave speedy chase, and soon he had the little man in his power. His name was Alberic, and he had fame as a cunning robber and a wondersmith. Dietrich desired to slay him, but the dwarf cried out, Kill me not, O Prince of Bern, and thou shalt have for thyself the great sword which I forge for Grimm and Hilda. It is called Naglaring, nor is its equal to be found in the world. I shall also guide thee unto a cavern where much treasure lies hidden. Dietrich promised to spare the life of the dwarf if his promise was fulfilled, and Alberic said, Thou must needs combat with Grimm, who hath the strength of twelve men, and also with Hilda, who is even more to be feared, ere thou canst possess thyself of the treasure. Binding vows were then taken by Alberic, who promised to return at eventide with the wondrous sword. As the dwarf promised, so did he do. He met Dietrich and Hildebrand close to a great mountain cliff, and delivered up the shining sword, Naglavring. Proud was the lad of that wondrous weapon, which brought him, as it befell, great fame in after years. The dwarf then vanished, and Hildebrand and Dietrich went towards the cliff. Ere long they found the secret door and opened it. The sunlight streamed within, and they beheld, lying beside a fire, gaunt Grimm and Hilda, who both at once sprang up angrily and desired vengeful combat. The giant sought for his Noglaring, but found it not. Cunningly, indeed, had the robber dwarf taken it from him. The giant then seized a burning log and leaped at Dietrich. Fast and furious were his blows, and the lad would surely have been slain, but for the sword he wielded. Hilda sprang at Hildebrand and wrestled with him. Long and fierce was the struggle, because the warrior had great strength. But the giantess held him tightly around the neck, until, gasping for breath, Hildebrand fell to the ground. So was he completely overcome, and the end of his days seemed to be very nigh. In vain the old warrior called upon Dietrich, who waged desperate conflict with the giant. But at length the lad prevailed. Leaping aside to escape a mighty blow, he smote Grimm with Noglaring and cut off his head. So perished the ferocious giant, who had laid desolate a great part of the kingdom of Dietmar. Hildebrand was meanwhile in sore distress. Hilda began to bind him so that he might be put to death by torture. But Dietrich smoked her so great a blow that clave her body in twain. 
but she relaxed not there at her ferocious embrace of the swooning warrior such was her power that she united her severed parts before the lad's eyes and caused herself to become made whole again so dietrich smoked her the second time right through the middle and yet again she was joined together as before hildebrand cried faintly leap thou between the hag's severed body when thou dost strike next and turn thine eyes from her as the warrior bade so did dietrich do he cut hildebrand in twain and immediately separated her body with his own nor did he look round <laughs> that was the end of hilda no longer could she work her evil will so she cried if grim had fought with dietrich as well as i fought with hildebrand we should ne'er have been overcome and then life went from her and hildebrand was set free the old warrior embraced the prince, praising his valor and skill, and the glory of battle gleamed in the eyes of Dietrich. Great was the treasure which was concealed in the cavern. Dietrich took for himself a wondrous shining helmet. It was called Hildegrim, after the giant and the giantess, and it gave more than a mortal strength to the hero who wore it. The prince put the helmet on his head. He triumphed in the power it gave him. Then, with Hildebrand, he returned unto his sire, King Dietmar, who rejoiced greatly because of the valorous deeds of his son, and he made him a full knight before all the people. There lived among the mountains to the west a great giant whose name was Ziganot, and he vowed to be avenged upon Dietrich because that he slew Grimm, his uncle, and Hilda, his aunt, and possessed himself of their treasure, and especially the helmet Hildegrim. One day Dietrich rode forth alone to hunt in the deep forest, and in the midst of it he found Ziganot lying fast asleep. Proud was the lad of his strength, and overconfident withal, and he desired greatly to combat with the giant. So he dismounted and went fearlessly towards him and kicked his body. Ziganot leaped up in anger. At last thou art come, he cried. Long have I waited for thee, Prince of Bern, so that I might take vengeance for the slaying of my kinsman Grim. The giant seized his giant spear, and Dietrich, drew his sword, noggling, but unequal was the combat. The giant smote but a single blow with a spear half and felled the prince whom he speedily bound. Then he bore Dietrich through the forest and cast him into a dark underground cavern, which was a dragon's lair. Snakes crept about and hissed in the darkness. The prince had need to combat with them. Meanwhile, Hildebrand went through the forest searching for the prince. He wondered because he could not hear his huntsman's horn, and when he found his horse bound to a tree, he feared greatly that Dietrich had been slain. Great was the grief of Hildebrand. Suddenly, he heard heavy footsteps coming through the trees. Ere long, the great Ziganot confronted him. Who art thou, and whom dost thou seek? the giant bellowed. Hildebrand is my name, answered the bold warrior, and I seek for Dietrich, prince of Bern. The giant thrust his spear at him, but Hildebrand fought fiercely with his sword. Ere long, despite his valor, the warrior was disarmed, and Ziganot caught him by the beard and dragged him through the forest, bellowing for the while. Follow me, Longbeard, follow me now, all Grimm and Hilda avenge. Soon shalt thou find thy prince of Bern. Now never before had a foeman dared to lay hands upon Hildebrand's beard, and for that reason he was more wroth than afraid of the giant. As the warrior was being thus ignobly dragged to the cave in which Dietrich lay bound, he saw the sword Nogglering lying on the ground. 
nimbly. He clutched it ere his captor was aware, and striking fiercely, he wounded the giant, who suddenly relaxed his hold so that the warrior leaped free. Then did fearless Hildebrand smite Ziegenot and slay him with a single blow. So perished the kinsman of Grimm, which he deemed proudly that his vengeance was complete. And here is where I end my tale for today. But I'll be back with more tales. Many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.